Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this one is based on a question I got from a subscriber. They wanted to create a report where the report was sorted on a subtotal. So you'll notice that even though there's only one line item here for each order on the first page, these orders are sorted in a small to large manner. So the first order, the whole entire order only amounted to $20. But as we continue to scroll down and see larger and larger and larger orders with two or three items, I go to the last page. I'll see the biggest order was for $3,000 and it has four items on it. Here's page two. And again, you see the subtotals are continue to get larger for each order. So this report is sorted on a subtotal. I thought it was a great question, so I decided to do a YouTube on how I created this. And basically, in order to create this, let's go into design view of the report, and I'll show you the group sort and total pane, which is opened with this button. So I've got the records sorted by order ID subtotal from the smallest to the largest. I could do it from the largest to the smallest. The label would need to be changed to make sense save and show this report in report view. And now we've got that biggest order at the top. But the question is, how did I get the order ID subtotal field here as the first sorting field? From there, the records are grouped on order ID and I've got both the customer name and the order ID in that header. And then I've got that order ID subtotal. If we look at the record set by opening the property sheet for this report, we're going to see a query, query sorted orders three. If I build on that, you'll see that I made query sorted orders three on two other queries that are joined by the order ID field because that's the primary key field of the order. I've got the customer name, order ID, product name, quantity, unit price, and subtotal, which is actually the quantity times the unit price for a line item in this first query, query sorted order. And then I've got the entire order ID subtotal in the second query. And that then gives me the order subtotal for every line item in that order. So let's go back a bit and look at those queries so you're very clear on how I created this. If we look at query sorted orders one in design view, this is exactly what you would expect. I've got the customer name from the customer's table. I had to include the orders table because I wanted some information out of the order details table. I needed that from a relationship standpoint. And I also wanted the product name out of the products table. And here's my subtotal field. It's simply the quantity field times the order details unit price field. I'm going to zoom on that and show you that I had to qualify the unit price field with a table name dot because the unit price field is actually in this query twice in both the products table and the order details table. And I personally think that's a bad idea. I think that all your fields that identify unique information should be given unique names. If that's always the same value, we don't need the field stored in two different tables. But I suspect what happened is there's a standard unit price that's in the products table and then based on the order and the quantity and the customer and how bad we need to get rid of that product, we might fudge the unit price a few pennies up or down at the time of the actual order. So there's also a unit price in the order details table for the unit price that was quoted to the customer at the specific time that the sale was made. So that's why I had to put the order details dot qualification in on this unit price field. So subtotal calculation would know that it came from the orders details table and not the products table. It's just a side issue. Here's your normal query. You've got your customer name, your order number, your product name, your quantity, unit price, and then quantity times the unit price gives us our subtotal. I need to marry that query to query sorted orders two. If I look at it in design view, it only contains two fields from the order details table. The order ID, we're grouping all the records together on the order ID. And we are summing up the quantity times the unit price. So we're summing up all of those subtotals of those line items. 
And so if I remember, if I look at order ID 1, I'm expecting it to be, let's see, let's sort by order ID 1. Okay, order ID 1 actually has four line items in it. And I've got 400, there's 800, there's 950, and 63, so I'm a little bit over 1,000. If I go back to query sorted orders 2, yes, order ID 1, the subtotal of those four line items is about 1,000. If I go back to query sorted orders 1, order ID number 5 is for 220 and 18. I can do that in my head. That would be 238 for a total. If I look at query sorted orders 2, then yes, order ID 5 has a subtotal of 238. So now I've got all the individual pieces of information that I want on the report. I had to create two different queries to do it because query sorted orders 1 shows me all the records, all 72 line items that have been ordered, and query sorted orders 2 shows me just the 28 orders with a subtotal of all the line items. But those are the individual pieces that I need to build this report. Now I'm going to go ahead and close these queries and look at query sorted orders 3. This is where I pull in that order ID subtotal to every record. If I look at it in datasheet view, I've got uh, let's sort again on order ID. I've got four line items for order ID number one, and I've got that order ID subtotal related to that order ID. So I'm pulling in that subtotal onto every record. And that's really the magic here because we want on our report to show all the details, but we also want it to show this subtotal and sort on the subtotal. If we merely wanted to show the subtotal, of course, I could just create the calculation here in the design view of the report. I wouldn't need to have a field that already calculated it. I could go in here with a text box and just create that calculation on the fly. And that would look like, you know, sum of the quantity times the unit price. And I would have my calculation to subtotal every order. I cannot sort on this control because it's being calculated at the same time the report is rendering. So the report cannot calculate that and sort on that at the same time. The calculation has to happen before the sort happens. So I can calculate that order subtotal easy enough with a calculation like this on my report. The problem with this, though, is I cannot sort on it. If I try to add a sort order with an expression that includes an aggregate function like that, quantity times unit price. And now I can just use unit price because I only have one unit price field in this record set. When I render the report, I'm going to get a message. You cannot sort the order by SQL clause on an aggregate function. The aggregate function is the sum function. So I have to delete that sort order and sort on a field that's already calculated. And that was the whole point of putting the calculation in its own query and then linking it to the original query, a one-to-many relationship, so that the order subtotal data shows up on every record. Now I can sort on any field in this query, sorted orders three query. And that's exactly what I did. And let's go ahead and look at it in report view one more time. And we are sorting now in descending order on subtotal because we calculated it prior using it as a sort field for this report. Let me say one more thing. If you want more information about the Northwind Traders database, please go to my website where I have all of my YouTubes organized. And on the Access Database page, I have a tremendous playlist tries to go through access fairly comprehensively, A to Z. And I also have a fairly recent playlist of using the Northwind Sample Database. Thank you.